So this little flash drive uh, landed a short while ago. And the uh, client told me that it was, um, it was bent. It was, it was bent pretty badly. Um, I don't know, I've had a quick look at it, uh, still in its enclosure. From the exterior, it's kind of hard to say whether or not it got um, beat up on the connector level or if it's something else. Uh, once we open this up, we'll find out. So let's turn on the microscope and do the inspection. So this device opens up by prying up on two tabs, the little pins that go into uh, that little swing protector. Just pry them up a little bit with a flathead screwdriver and they come off very nicely. Uh, once they're out, you remove the uh, swinger, uh, swing arm out of there and uh, the housing is just two uh, uh, castings pressed in by clips. Uh, prime apart and we get access to our device. So this is based on Alcor controller and we got one uh, BGA132 memory component on there. You can see that the board was bent. The connector seems good. The connector didn't break off but the NAND is slightly um, lifted. If the NAND looks lifted, chances are there is some problem with it already. Okay, it's definitely worth checking out. Even if it's got a little bit of something that doesn't look right, it's always easy enough to check it out. So that's where I'm gonna place um, my bet that that's the issue. By correcting that issue, we should see some sort of results or at least get a better understanding of what's going on. So first things first, let's remove the chip. Let's plug it in. Um, we can plug in the uh, device after to see if it's going to drop out into a safe mode. If it does, um, then we're on the right track. The chip comes out and I can already see the issue that is underlaying in between. So um, the impact most likely uh, stressed the chip so much that it had to uh, the chip is not going to flex, it's going to just fracture if it does. But the board is flexible, so it will flex. Uh, copper tracks that are underneath the uh, mask, they're not flexible, they'll rip. So from what I can see here, three uh, critical pads broke off. So if we wanted to get this unit uh, recovered by performing the repair, we're going to need to uh, fix those pads up and um, remount everything. So preparing pads, getting rid of oxidation, cleaning off the flux is basic standard procedure. Now we're looking at ripped off uh, pads and we're gonna do the repair. So scratch off uh, whatever they're supposed to connect to on the trace, uh, add a little flux, tin those scratched off uh, bits that we just made up, uh, strip the wire a little bit with heat, and start adding them up. One, that's two, and the last one, that's three. So clean it off a little bit. We don't need that flux there. Now we gotta roll them in. This process can be tedious and does require quite a bit of patience, a little practice, but eventually uh, it becomes kind of fun. So in our case, it's not a lot of work. It's only three pads. Once they're fixed, we need to secure them with something. And uh, for that, we use green um, cure mask that is gonna cure with the UV light later on. Don't use too much because it's just gonna take forever to cure you just need to basically isolate uh, the exposed wire and seal it off, right? So the UV light goes on, let it bake. While it's baking, we're going to prepare the NAND chip. The NAND chip, as you can see, has lots of pads attached to it. I'm going to clean it all up and wick it all out so that 
you can see how many pads were on my tip. Um, let's get rid of that uh, uh, solder that's on there. Once it's off, we're going to put all fresh uh, balls on there. Clean it up. Alcohol, wipe down. Once it's leveled, stencil time. So BGA 132 stencils, you can check them in the description. I have them listed there, work pretty good. Nothing really spectacular here. There's, it, these are simple to reball. Uh, you just use a spatula, spread it around. Um, I pre prefer to use this method over uh, keeping the stencil on top of the device, on top of the chip, I should say. Uh, heating it up at 350 uh, with 40 airflow gives me pretty good control on how the reflow is going to go. Once um, all of that is done, we're ready to take it to the next step. So let's scratch off this, the mask that cured. That is going to give us um, straight access to the pad. I also wanted to recheck the controller on the same device because it did look a little beat up. So I've removed it and this is the pad that, was question, that I had in question. But the connection there is good. These two pads that ripped out, they're not connected to anything, so we're not really going to worry about it. There was one more. I didn't show you in the corner, but that one was not important as well because it also wasn't connected to anything. Apply a new uh, uh, fresh solder to tin the pads and we'll be ready to mount this thing up. Once it's lined up, uh, just heat it over. Same temperature setting as I use for the NAND. Uh, once we use uh, solder that has lead in it, it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, 350 at 40 airflow does a great job at it. Now, uh, just remount everything with the iron just to make sure it's all connected. Um, just rerun the iron through all the big components just to make sure that there's no stress cracks in the um, solder joints and stuff like that. Apply a little bit of flux to uh, the uh, pads for the NAND and uh, position the NAND for mounting. We're almost done. That's it. So, lining this up, uh, you, you shouldn't mount it up perfectly, line it up perfectly right at the beginning because uh, having it a little bit offside uh, to how it's supposed to be is going to help you see the process take place. Pads on uh, these chips are huge and uh, the uh, chip will actually um, force itself into the correct position once uh, your solder uh, liquefies again and uh, the chip will position itself and you'll see it moving when uh, it starts to pull itself into um, perfect center. So just apply heat gradually, best thing not to rush and uh, not to use a lot of airflow. Uh, the more airflow you're going to use, the worse it's going to get. Obviously, use enough airflow as well. If you're going to set it up at 10, you're going to sit there for a long time. You see how it moved on, on its own? It kind of does like this two-step dance by positioning itself in. First, one half goes in, then the second one. Now we're good to go. Let it cool off a little bit and let's see the progress. Yep. That's connected. Over here I have a USB control panel for deep spar. I'm gonna power it up. Get it in the same shot so you guys can see. Hit the power switch. You can see we get 29.8 gigs recognition. I'm gonna launch a um, fresh screen for our studio. We have DeepSpar USB stabilizer, but that's not what we're gonna work with. We got USB Lexar flash drive right there. If we look at the um, hex view and scroll through it, 
that is data. So now if we clone this unit, we should get all of that data back like that. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you uh, broke your flash drive, check the link in the description. We'll help you out. And if you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and notify yourself with a button that represents a bell. It will notify you the next time video drops. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.